welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. We're outside on my patio because I thought it's a beautiful day. Let's go outside and film today's video. Today's video is all about zero point foods, the truth behind zero point foods. And I have some interesting information to share with you, maybe some jaw dropping, mind blowing information to share. So thank you so much for clicking on today's video. If you're new, make sure that you're subscribed and that your bell notification is turned on so that you don't miss a single video. Thumbs up this video if you love these tips and tricks. And without further ado, let's jump into the truth about zero point foods. <music> One of the most popular questions that I receive literally daily, several times a day, is about the zero point foods. Overeating them, under eating them, do I have to track them? Well, I'm scanning this and it's coming up with points, but it's zero points. How am I supposed to navigate zero point foods? So I've done quite a bit of research. I've taken a lot of the questions that you've brought to me on a daily basis and decided that it would make most sense to kind of put this all into one video to share with you truthfully the truth behind zero point foods. Zero point foods are not zero calories. So I wanna start the video out right there. Just because something is assigned a point value of zero does not make it free does not make it a free for all, eat as much as you want, and does not mean that it is calorie free. The only thing in the world that is calorie free is water. So you need to be mindful when you're eating zero point foods that they do contain calories. And again, no food in this world is a free food. So WW made the zero point foods, the zero points for a reason. These foods are generally low in fat, somewhat low in calories depending on the zero point food and they are high in protein. So the reason they are zero points is to guide you towards choosing those foods as the basis of your meals. I am not a big fan of eating zero point meals. I think that the basis of your meal should be zero point foods, but you should be adding things to those meals to make points. So for example, let's say that for dinner, you've decided that you're gonna throw a breast of chicken on your barbecue. That is zero points. And maybe you're going to even pair that with a zero point vegetable, like some broccoli. If you're on the blue or purple plan, you can have peas or corn. Now you're eating a meal that is zero points. So I would recommend throwing on an additional side, maybe a starch that has points in it. Now, if you're on the purple plan and even your starches are zero points, add some toppings, some sour cream to that potato, some real butter to those vegetables. Add additional items to your meals to have points. Try your best not to have zero point meals. Zero point meals can be hundreds and hundreds of calories, but your mind tells you that they're zero points. Definitely use the zero point foods to set yourself up for success on a daily basis. These foods are generally very filling and very nutrient dense. So you can use these foods again as the foundation of your meals and even your snacks. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a zero point food as a snack, but I would steer away from complete zero point meals. I also have to say that WW was very smart when they put together the zero point foods list. This essentially tricks your mind into choosing zero point foods. When something is zero points and you only have a certain amount in a day, you're going to naturally gravitate towards those items because they're zero points. So you're able to fill your day with other foods that maybe you enjoy like starchy items or chips or crackers or whatever the case may be for you. If you build your meals around these zero point foods, then you have points available for these other foods throughout the day. But that in itself can be a double-edged sword. If you are saving all of your points for other things such as snacks or maybe an indulgent dessert or maybe just not good for you foods and eating a lot of zero point meals, then that opens you up to potentially overeating calorie wise throughout the day. You're eating all of these zero point foods. Eggs have 70 calories per egg, but are zero points. Chicken breast has about 110 calories for one serving, but is zero points. Ground turkey has about 130 calories for one serving, but is zero points. So do you see where I'm going with this? You can eat all of those zero point foods and then pack on all of the pointed foods that you want throughout the day, your snacky foods, your desserts, and before you know it, you are well over your calorie goal for the day, 
which we all know calories in versus calories out is how you lose weight. And if you're overeating calories, you're not going to be successful on the scale. I've seen people eat zero point meals all day long, literally entire zero point meals, breakfast, lunch, snack, so that they can have pizza for dinner. Well, pizza is anywhere from three to 500 calories per slice and usually about nine to 11 smart points. So technically you could have three pieces, two or three pieces of pizza clocking in almost a thousand calories using your points and then eating all of those zero point foods throughout the day would be well over an additional thousand calories. So here you are over your calories for the day to be in a deficit to lose weight. So that is where I think zero point foods become really tricky. And as you know, WW says, don't worry about weighing and measuring zero point foods. Don't worry about tracking zero point fo foods. Don't scan them. Just eat to fullness. Well, that's another thing. Everyone's hunger levels are different. Not everybody gets full on the same amount of food. So I think that that philosophy from WW, no offense to WW, you guys know I love the program, can be a little bit misleading. I think it is still important to weigh and measure your zero point foods, to be mindful of how much you're eating, to stick with a serving size if you are full after that serving size, because it still has calories, even though not a lot of calories, it still has calories and they add up the more you eat. On the flip side of that, you can also under eat using zero point foods. Zero point foods, like I said, have little calories and they are packed with good nutrients such as protein and fiber. So they generally will get you full and keep you full. So a lot of people find themselves under eating when they're utilizing zero points as well. I also think that those exact people that find themselves under eating are eating zero point foods, but they're also eating a lot of processed foods or on another note, foods that are very, very low in calories, but high in smart points due to sugar content or fat content, things like granola bars or chips or cookies or protein bars. They can be pretty low in calories, but pack a good punch of points. And by pairing a lot of those throughout the day with some zero point foods, you can find yourself under eating as well. It's definitely a delicate balance. The zero point foods is a delicate, delicate balance. And what I mean by a delicate balance is you have to strategically eat zero point foods and other foods throughout the day to make sure that you are number one, eating enough, number two, not under eating, and number three, that you're not starving. Because if you're starving all day, every day, you're not going to stick with WW. You're not going to stick with any weight loss program if you're constantly starving. Now, of course, you are going to be hungry because you're in a calorie deficit, but you shouldn't be starving and out of points by mid-afternoon. That is where the zero point foods come in, to help fill the gaps, to be the basis of your meals and snacks. And in the event that you find yourself out of points mid-afternoon and you're still hungry, Hungry, that's when you would reach for the zero point foods, the zero point proteins, eggs, meat, the zero point vegetables, fruits. Fruits are a great thing to fill in the gaps with, but again, watch your fruit intake. Not only are they generally higher in naturally occurring sugar, they can be higher in calories. And by eating, overeating the fruits, you can find yourself really quickly overeating calories and consuming a lot of sugar, even though it is naturally occurring sugar. Months and months ago, I put out a video about how I work freestyle. This is when it was freestyle, which is essentially now the blue program. And I think these tips and tricks that I shared in that video months and months ago still are relevant today. I'm going to link that video down below for you guys. But in that video, I talked about my 221 method. And I think that this is a good foundation to start with the zero point foods. My 221 method is two zero point proteins per day two zero point fruits per day and one zero point starchy vegetable. So things such as corn or peas. Again, this was when it was freestyle, which is the blue program, but all of these foods are still zero points today on blue and purple. And by limiting my zero point foods, I'm still using those as the basis of all of my meals. I can have a zero point protein for breakfast and for dinner. I can have a zero point fruit as a snack and maybe with my lunch. And then at part of dinner, I might throw in a zero point starchy vegetable. I don't think that by adding an additional zero point protein is unreasonable. I think if you are going to add any additional zero point foods to that day, a zero point protein 
in a serving size of a zero point protein would be a good decision maybe at lunch. Now for me, if I ate over the 221 method, I tracked it. I went ahead and put the nutritional information into the calculator. You could also use the quick add function because if I enter chicken breast in the app, it's going to tell me it's zero points. So I actually have to quick add the points or I have to use the calculator and enter the nutritional information to determine what the points are of chicken breast. And I would generally track that if I ate more than two servings in a day. That way I am staying within my calories. It helps me from overeating the zero point foods and I'm not under eating them because my goal is two to one every single day. So again, I'm going to link that video down below. I think it would be great for you to go back and reference that video. It'll kind of come full circle and tie this video together as well. So I shared a lot of information with you today. So I wanted to recap the truth behind zero point foods. And that is no food is zero calories. No food is free. There are no free foods in the world. There are zero point foods per WW, but those foods should be eaten in moderation. And again, should be the basis and foundation of your meals. The zero point foods were made as zero points because they are low in fat, high in protein, high in fiber, so they keep you full, satisfied, and honestly, they're real whole food, which is the majority of what should be eaten on any type of diet plan to be satiated and to allow your body to process and break that food down the way that your body knows how to do that. Zero point foods also trick you into eating healthy. That is the reason they are zero points. They trick you into, not even trick, but they guide you into choosing them as the basis or foundations of your meals. And that is why WW made those foods zero points. You can eat a lot of food for little calories and be nice and full and satisfied. And remember, some people need more food than other people to feel full and satisfied. These are the people that have kind of a bottomless pit and can eat a lot of food. And we generally can find ourselves overeating the zero point foods. We definitely, I know for me, don't fall on the under eating. If anything, I would gravitate more towards overeating the zero point foods. So learn your body and learn what you need when it comes to portions to be full and satisfied. And lastly, don't eat zero point meals all day and then save your foods for things like cake and pizza that are extremely calorie dense and very point heavy because you have to remember you're eating calories throughout the whole day, even though they were zero point foods. And then you're eating a big chunk of calories with that indulgent meal or dessert that you're choosing to have because you were so good and ate zero point food. So the truth about zero point foods as they are there as the foundation, they are there to keep you full and satisfied for little calories. They are full of nutrients and fiber and they're there to be utilized. But just be mindful of your portion of the zero point foods so that you're not overeating and on the flip side, under eating. It's very important to utilize zero point foods. If you don't, you are not going to be anywhere near your caloric intake for the day if you're only eating foods that have points. The zero point foods were given to us to be utilized. Be mindful of zero point meals and just if you are questioning whether you're overeating or under eating, take a moment and use one of the free calorie counting apps, MyFitnessPal, Spark People, Lose It, and track your calories for the day and make sure that you aren't overeating or under eating because neither of those things are going to get you to your weight loss goal and neither of those things are sustainable long term. So I hope that I shared some really valuable information and shared the truth behind the zero point foods with you and gave you a little bit of food for thought and things to think about when it comes to how you're structured your meals throughout the day. Again, if you're new to my channel, I'd love it if you'd stick around, hit the little subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. Check out that description box down below. You're going to find the video where I talk all about the 221 method. And I'm also going to link the video on help I'm not losing weight on freestyle aka the blue program by overeating zero point food. So I'm going to link both of those videos down below. Highly recommend that you check them out. It is really going to tie all of this together for you. Also in the description box is the link to come over and join my Facebook group. We are over 16,000 amazing supportive members and we would love to have you be part of our community over there. So head on over and join us. Links and discount codes to my favorite things are also down in the description box. So definitely check that out. Thumbs up this video if I shared some great information with you today. And of course, leave down in the comments any additional questions you have or comments regarding the truth behind zero point foods. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. As always, I love you guys so much and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys. Funny how the story goes, little hope of bigger dreams.